So, Jesus called the twelve to him and there's his main teaching point. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Ambition is stood on its head in the kingdom of God. Does that make sense to everybody? You sure? Yes, yeah, another thing to go and do it. <laughs> so Jesus wants to, wants to reinforce this in them. He wants to get this through their heads. He wants them to see it plainly and clearly. So he gives them an illustration in verses 36 to 37. He took a little child who he placed among them. And taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. The illustration is going to be memorable. It's striking, isn't it? See, in those times, it was completely countercultural to do what he just did. And in our days, it'll be countercultural to follow his teaching in this way too. But in his day, the illustration is countercultural. Here's the gathering in the house. They've, they've had their journey of the day and they've got to this place. And Jesus is the esteemed teacher. He's the rabbi. He's welcomed in and hospitality is done to him. Because very much in those days, that is the way it was. Hospitality is done to him and it's done to his disciples and the important people are sitting in that house that evening after a long day's journey and dust on their feet which has all been now washed off and they've been given the hospitality of the home. The important people are all sitting around for their meal close to the preacher. And the women would be cooking and serving at the table and their prestige and their status comes through that, through the cooking and the serving and the looking after and the whatever because that's the way, that's the society you had. But there are concentric rings of prestige in the room. Because we're not talking about large houses where children have their own bedroom and are sent to play their video games, right? Okay, he's now looking. So it's not like that. The children are sort of pushed to the edge of the room and they're expected to be there sat quietly. The expectation of them, what they're trained to do, is sit quietly and, 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 and the important people are in the middle. Away from the action, keeping quiet, not troubling the important people who are all gathered to and sat around the preacher. And Jesus took a child from the back of the room and put that child and placed that child right up there in the middle of them. More than that, Jesus, the important person in the room altogether, then took the child up in his arms. See, the child had been lurking off in the background, not asserting its status. And Jesus, picked, which was proper and expected, and Jesus picked up that child who had been behaving utterly non-assertively and shocked the, shocked the whole company with his in-depth analysis of what surprisingly constitutes status in the kingdom of God. Welcoming a little child without status, he says, is to welcome the Son of Man who shares the throne of the cosmos with the Ancient of Days. In fact, to do so is to welcome the one who sent the Son of Man. Who sent the Son of Man? That'll be the Ancient of Days then, who belongs on the throne of the cosmos from eternity. It's to welcome the Ancient of Days himself. Welcoming the lowliest, giving them status and standing and esteem in your presence is like welcoming the greatest to God. Now that's an astonishing episode. Given what's just happened in verses 14 to 29, it is an astonishing episode. <clears throat> There's the way it is. He took a little child and he placed the little child amongst them and he says, you go reverse the status equation because this is the work of the kingdom of God. What do we aspire to? Let's be sure we aspire our ambition is such as is conditioned by following a crucified, rejected, suffering Messiah. 